David Needham, a well-known cancer researcher and now inventor of a new nasal spray that has potential to be a game changer for COVID-19 prevention and early treatment once it's tested. David is a professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering and Materials Science School of Engineering at Duke University in the USA. He also has an appointment in the Pharmacy School in Nottingham University in the United Kingdom and he has held one of the most prestigious awards in Denmark as a Danish National Research Foundation, Niels Bohr Professor at the University of Southern Denmark. Originally from Oldham near Manchester, he is actually a chemist by training with a PhD in physical chemistry. Following his mother's bout with breast cancer in 1972 during his PhD, he decided that he wanted to work in cancer research. And so, he switched into the field of lipid bilayer and cell membranes during his postdoctoral training at the Physiological Laboratories in Cambridge University, United Kingdom, and then at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada, before being hired as an assistant professor at Duke University and has also applied his knowledge in cancer treatment, a thermally sensitive liposome drug carrier that releases its drug in the bloodstream of a tumor worn by hypothermia treatment. More recently, he developed a new strategy for treating cancer following nature's designs and how cancer cells feed on the low-density lipoprotein nanoparticles from the bloodstream. We made a video of this back in 2019. He came up with a strategy that makes the drug look like the cancer's food. It was during this research that he switched to COVID-19 when it emerged in 2020. The pH dependence of nicosylamid solubility dissolution in morphology. In the paper, he describes a new formulation that has the potential to prevent SARS-CoV-2 infection when used prophylactically as a preventive nasal spray. The same formulation could also be used in early treatment as a throat spray to help reduce the viral load that could otherwise go into the lungs. Let's hear about his new ideas and achievements. Yeah, sure. David, let's start by asking, how did you come up with the idea? For the past several years, I've been working on new formulations for cancer. And one of the molecules that popped up as an interesting choice was niclosamide. Niclosamide has been used for 60 years as an anti-metabolic drug to treat parasitic infection. And like many drugs, niclosamide is not very water soluble. So this almost complete lack of systemic uh, toxicity is obviously good for its original application of treating the gut parasites, but it's relatively useless for it being used for anything else like cancer Back in March 2020, I was still researching the clozomide for cancer and a new project on lung fibrosis with one of my colleagues, Christina Barkarskas, who's a doctor in the Division of Pulmonary Medicine. She sent me a paper that had just been published in South Korea that showed the clozomide could actually stop viral replication in cells at only one micromolar concentration. So immediately I started working on it and seeing if I could make formulations that might be a nasal spray to perhaps act as a prophylactic preventative or throat spray that um, would halt the viral spread down the back of the throat into the lungs where it starts to do its most damage. I worked night and day uh, on my own in the lab because our campus had been shut down. I made a series of formulations in hydrating nasal sprays, mouthwashes, and even eye drops. And I wrote a series of provisional patent applications. Anyway, by studying the physical and chemical properties of this molecule, I figured out that I could simply dissolve niclosamide in a series of higher pH solutions of pH 8 and get a concentration that was 20 to 30 times that required by the Korean researchers in their cell studies to stop the virus in its tracks. So that's when I came up with the current niclosamide solution formulation. So how would it work? What is the mechanism whereby it stops the virus from replicating? So niclosamide is a very interesting molecule because it can partition into lipid membranes of cells and especially into the energy producing parts of the cell called the mitochondria. So the way it works in reducing viral replication is not on the virus itself, but on the cell that gets infected i.e. the host cell in your nose and or throat. Turns out that in order to replicate, the virus actually needs to use the cell's own machinery. And so if the cell has already been exposed to an amount of niclosamide that reduces the amount of energy available, then the virus just can't replicate. 
And so that's what they found in the South Korean paper in their studies. Clozomide actually stops three of them, which is amazing and why I think it needs to be tested. How would it be used and what would be the advantages? As we test it, I expect it to be used as a prophylactic preventative, spread up the nose from a spray bottle before a person enters into any high-risk environment like a store or other indoor gathering. Recent studies in Christina's lab with her senior scientist, Zach Keller, are showing that niclosamide solution, just in a simple buffer, can start to act on cells in a matter of minutes. So the idea and the advantage is that if any virus got through to the nasal epithelial cells, it could perhaps stop the initial infection in the first place by stopping the virus from getting its RNA into a cell. And then if the cells did get infected, it could eliminate or at least slow down any viral replication such that the immune cells activated by vaccines might be able to handle a reduced viral load. Of course, that all remains to be tested, and that's why I'm looking for the right partners to take this on. Speaking of that, what do you need for the next steps, and who would you like to engage and partner with? As you probably know, every medication has to be tested in animals first, and then in humans, and determined to be safe. It's my belief that people should not be making huge profits out of other people's suffering. And so I would like to find partners that share this view. For example, governments and infectious disease institutes that would have the resources and wherewithal to take this on and offer it at cost or reduced and reinvested profit with some of that profit going towards the further development of semi-cancer formulations, which would then be similarly tested. Basically, open source pharmaceuticals starting generic. We actually do have a small grant from the American Lung Association with Christina, but things need to move much faster than we have the resources and expertise to accomplish. I'm now looking for such government labs and infectious disease institutes where they have access to the latest viral variants and the resources to conduct clinical trials in humans to start this testing and bring it through the manufacturing and distribution process to their own, in their own countries. As I've discovered by researching the literature, Niclosamide could also do the same for many other respiratory viruses, and one that the person at the respiratory diseases branch is interested in is respiratory syncytia virus, or RSV. Once established for COVID-19, it could find applications across the world for this and other viral infections, and indeed new ones that might arise. It's my gift to a suffering world.